Welcome to our coaching DVD for the snatch. The snatch is a highly technical movement in which a barbell is lifted from the floor to a stable overhead position with arms locked out. The bar must be vertically displaced enough for the lifter to get under the bar in the catch position. It is one of the two lifts of Olympic weightlifting and it has a wide range of benefits for athletes. The demands imposed by performing the snatch cause specific adaptations, which transfer to a wide variety of sports and movement patterns. This is known as dynamic correspondence. To justify the inclusion of any exercise in the training program, it must comply with at least some of the five principles. Amplitude and direction of movement. This is the range of motion and direction of force. When jumping, basketball players overcome gravity by triple extending their hips, knees and ankles and exerting force vertically. This is replicated with the second pull of the snatch. Region of accentuated force production. Force must be generated from a joint angle similar to the sporting movement. In the snatch, concentric force is developed by triple extending the ankle, knee and hip from a flex position. This is comparable to a 100 meter sprinter accelerating from starting blocks. Dynamics of effort. The speed and effort must be greater than required for the sports skill. Studies show the average power output of a rugby player while sprinting is 900 watts, while elite weightlifters can generate up to 6,700 during the second pull of the snatch. Given the large amount of force required to execute a snatch, it is safe to say that the snatch will comply with this principle. Rate and time of maximal force production. This is the amount of force exerted in a specific time frame. A heavy snatch requires a high rate of force development as a deficiency will result in a failed lift. This is relevant to many sports which require rapid speed and power, particularly sports which require body propulsion or a light object to be thrown at maximal velocity. Regime of muscular work. The snatch is primarily an explosive concentric movement. It also requires the core muscles to contract isometrically to prevent injury or energy link in the kinetic chain. And it requires the lower limbs to eccentrically oppose the downward force of the overhead barbell. To summarise, training the snatch improves physical performance in sports which require explosive power, triple extension, vertical force displacement, a kinetic chain starting from the ground and concentric movements starting from a position of hip, knee, ankle and shoulder flexion. It's important to be aware of your surroundings when attempting a lift as certain things such as unracked weights, people passing by and all other distracting activity could affect your focus on the lift. Correct equipment such as the barbell being used for a snatch must be suitable to the style of weightlifting and the participant using it. The correct barbell for a male weightlifter would be a 20kg weightlifting bar, whereas a female weightlifting bar weighs 15kg and is not recommended for a male weightlifter. It's also important to use clips whenever you are lifting with any weight on the bar. This will ensure that the plates do not fall off and cause damage to the facility or the person lifting. Footwear is another important factor as it can help with proper form which helps reduce the risk of falling under a lift and execution which reduces the risk of injury through dropping the weight on your feet. External rotations are a good way to increase stability and strength of the shoulder which will dramatically improve the ability to deal with the stress of a load in an overhead position. Hey, it's time to get high, homie, so pass the J. Overhead squats will be a good way to get used to the range of motion from the catch and recovery positions. You can alternate up and down tempo which will improve the control you have when in an overhead squat position. In order to perform an overhead squat you should start with your feet just slightly outside shoulder width position, your elbows fully extended with the barbell above your head. 
From here, you'll be safe to perform an overhead squat as long as you keep your core stable. Oh, you say that you're feeling it. Haters didn't get the invite, huh? But I bet that they... A snatch balance is an exercise that will add more demand on technique, precision and speed to the overhead squat. Overall, this exercise should help you create more stability when transitioning through the latter phases of the lift. A snatch balance can be performed by starting fully extended at the ankle, knees and hips, and with pace, dropping into an overhead squat position. A snatch pull is a mimic of the first pull and half of the second pull. It is sometimes necessary to increase the load for a snatch pull as it will help you get used to being explosive with a heavy weight until you need to transition from the barbell being in front of your body to it being in an overhead position. In order to perform a snatch pull, you must start in the first pull position and explode up until the barbell reaches transition position. Back bail can be due to banging the bar off the hips, which will lead to swinging the bar instead of pulling and getting under it, and this will normally result in a miss. When you have the bar over your head and you're certain you're going to miss the lift, the natural and correct thing to do is to jump forward out of the way to avoid the bar falling on top of you. There will also be times when you are sitting at the bottom of an overhead squat trying to find some stability, knowing that you are going to miss the lift. If this happens, then just let the bar fall behind you and jump forward. If you need to bail on a snatch from the front, drop the bar down in front of you and jump back to avoid hitting the bar. Missing a snatch from the front can be caused by getting pulled forward from the floor and letting the barbell get away from you. You're getting way too big for your boots. You're never too big for the boot. I got the big size toes on my feet. Your face ain't big for my boots. Kick up the you. Man, know that I kick up the you. The setup position for the snatch is arguably the most important stage of the lift, as it ensures that the lifter is set in a mechanically efficient position for the start of the lift. If the setup position is incorrect, then the lift will most likely fail or will result in more energy being used to compensate for poor technique. The first part of the setup position is to have your feet underneath the bar in a jumping width position, which will enable the bar to be just over your forefoot. This is very important because this allows you to set up tight and get your shins close to the bar. The forefoot is a much more solid base than being forward onto your toes. This means that you are getting as close to your centre of mass as you can. The 
The next part of the setup is to have your elbows locked down in a wide grip position. The reason for using the wider hand grip position is because there will be less distance for the bar to travel as contact has been made higher. Next you need to grip the bar with the hook grip. The hook grip is a technique that involves wrapping the thumb around the bar and then wrapping the remaining fingers around the thumb. The hook grip is designed to stop the barbell from turning while gripped in the hands, so therefore the hook grip is better suited for higher loads. Have your scapula retracted back and have your thoracic spine extended. The lumbar spine must be in a neutral position. Doing this will allow the torso to maintain an upright angle and will therefore reduce hip and lumbar torque. This means there will be less fatigue in the spine extensors during the first pull. Hips should be higher than the knees. This will allow for a greater speed of hip extension in the second pull. Having a rounded back and shoulders will decrease the upright angle and therefore will increase lumbar torque. This means the spine extensors during the first pull will fatigue more easily and therefore may impact the performance of the snatch. Having your knees lower than your hips will increase hip torque and will result in a decreased speed of hip extension in the second pull. This can also lead to shoulders being behind the bar, which is not a mechanically efficient position to be in, especially when you are trying to lift weight vertically above your head. Having your hips too high will push your shoulders too far forward in front of the bar, resulting in an inefficient, incorrect position for the snatch. Once the lifter has set up correctly, they will initiate the first pull. The aim of which is to arrive in the transition to the second pull with correct body position, balance and appropriate bar momentum. A poor first pull will often lead to errors in the later stages of the lift. Begin the first pull by extending the knees and moving the bar off the ground. As the knees extend, they also move posteriorly to allow room for the bar to move upwards. Keep the arms straight. This will avoid any leakage of force in a kinetic chain from the wrists to the shoulders. Raise the hips and shoulders while maintaining the back angle consistent with the setup. The bar moves vertically upwards in a straight line and stays close to the shins. This is the most direct and efficient way to move the bar from the start position to the end position of the first pull. The weight of the lifter shifts from the middle of the foot to the heels. This keeps the bar close to the lifter's centre of mass and slightly dorsiflexes the ankle joint which allows it to plant or flex forcefully in the second pull. Shoulders stay above and slightly in front of the bar. Keep the lats tight by imagining you are squeezing an orange between the armpits. Movement errors. Ripping the bar from the floor. Peak force development is reached during the second pull. Trying to move the bar too quickly can lead to a loss of balance and weaken the second pull. Take your time to ensure the correct body position. Pulling with the arms will result in force being lost in the kinetic chain. The force is generated with the knee and hip extensors and the elbow should remain extended. Pull the slack out of the arms before initiating the lift. The torso rising before the hips means that the hamstring and gluteal muscles have over contributed to the movement at the expense of the quadricep muscles, limiting their ability to contract in later stages. The shoulders may move posteriorly in relation to the bar and this could also result in the bar moving horizontally to avoid hitting the knees. Raising the hips before the torso will put the shoulders in front of the bar and the lifter in an incorrect position. Putting weight on the front foot will result in the lifter being out of balance. Initiate the pull from the centre of the foot and end with weight over the heels. Spinal flexion will prevent a solid kinetic chain and full contraction of the latissimus dorsi. There will be a risk of pinching of the intervertebral discs. Assistance exercises for the first pull. Snatch grip halting deadlifts. Set up exactly the same as in a regular snatch and go through the same motion as the first pull, stopping at the knee and reversing the movement while maintaining body position and back angle. By breaking the snatch into a smaller part, this allows the first pull to be practiced and mastered. 
Stiff leg deadlifts strengthen the glute heel and hamstring muscles concentrically. The erector spinae isometrically and allow the hook grip to be practiced with heavier weights than the snatch. Hinge forward at the hips, keeping the bar close to the body and a neutral spine. Lower the bar towards the floor until a point just before the spine begins to flex and then return to the start position. The second pull is the defining movement of the Olympic lifts. It incorporates a strong triple extension pattern that projects enough force through the bar and a powerful upward pull that gives the lifter enough time and space to drop beneath the bar into a strong overhead squat position for the catch. It must be explosive and in one fluid motion and therefore the lifter must adhere strictly to form as it requires little error to spoil the lift. The transition phase should blend seamlessly into the second pull and here from what's called the power position the bar is pulled forcefully upward. It is important to note that the arms must remain straight and locked with elbows turned inwards. This ensures the force applied is done so by the entire body through the triple extension pattern and not doing so will lead to loss of power and compromising the lift. As the lifter extends, the bar moves upward to the crease of the hips and aided by a strong shrug at the shoulders, enough force is applied through the bar that the lifter can then bend at the elbows and begin to descend ready for the catch. Here, the final position of the second pull is shown. The hips, knees and ankles are extended. The shoulders are shrugged and the elbows have begun to bend. As with all movements that require powerful triple extension, such as jumping, observe how the movement begins at the hips and moves distally to the knees and then the ankles. This is because the large hip extensor muscles will contract first, generating energy which will then pass down to the knees and then ankles, producing enough power to complete the movement. Although this will happen naturally, and this is not something the lifter should focus on, it is important that the back remains straight and engaged throughout the entire movement and a good setup in the previous phases should ensure this. The spine mustn't flex or hyperextend and the shoulder blades pulled back firmly into a retracted position. The arms are straight and the lifter is looking forward. Although the lifter here comes off the ground after the pull, this should be kept to a minimum and not encouraged because if the lifter travels up with the bar, there won't be enough time to drop for the catch as they will both be travelling downward at the same time. Here the weight is light and as more load is added to the bar, this small jump will be less apparent. Here you can see the triple extension pattern that the lifter should focus on. Notice in this example that the lifter releases his grip on the bar at the top and the bar continues to travel upward. This is simply to demonstrate how the force applied to the bar should allow it to continue its course, affording time for the lifter to drop into the catch position. Here are examples of poor triple extension. Without proper extension at the hip, the athlete will smother the lift. And here, we see poor ankle extension. Also keeping the arm straight for too long will stop the bar from travelling upward. It is important that the bar remains as close to the body as possible to ensure the correct bar path. The bar should be pulled into the hips as opposed to pushing the hips into the bar as this will push the bar outward and the lift will fail. Here is an example of what will happen if the hips are thrust into the bar. The bar is pushed away from the body and the lifter is forced to jump forward. Catch and recovery positions include everything from a squat and upwards when performing a snatch. For the catch, the bar is caught over the crown of the head in an overhead squat position with the elbows fully extended. You should be landing slightly wider than the start position to help shift the weight correctly and allow greater depth in the catch. For the recovery part of the lift, you should drive upwards through your heels simultaneously leading with the chest up and a straight back and explosively extend at the ankles, knees and hips. If a lifter wasn't confident enough to perform a full snatch, then a power snatch might be an alternative. A power snatch helps ensure new lifters extend completely and aggressively. It helps teach the effort to turn the bar over aggressively and fix it tightly overhead as quickly as possible. This limits the number of details a lifter has to go through in order to perform a snatch.
Your time is 